everyone, thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for Survivor's Remorse, Season 4, Episode 1, Fallout. So, this is my first time reviewing this particular show, even though I have watched it every season. Um, well, because basically I'm new to YouTube. I've only been reviewing since April. Um, so, yeah. Let's just get into this episode. I'm like, let me hurry up and do this really re this quick review before I go out for my day. Um, and this particular episode, it picks right up where the season finale left off last time. And it seems like this episode is basically about, you know, um, Cam, Reggie, Mary, uh, MJ, MJ. Is her name MJ? I don't think, no. Mary Charles. So it's MC. Damn it. Cam's damn sister. I can't think of her name right now. M. Chuck. Duh. Um, and Reggie's wife, Missy, dealing with, like, parent issues, basically. So the episode does open up with, um, Cam, and he's on a press conference because, you know, from the season finale last time, they lost in the playoffs. And he was crying, 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 crying. So now he's in front of the press and he's doing this whole little media press, the whole, you know, interview thing after a game. And he's answering a couple of different questions, you know, and all that stuff. Then, like, a little boy walks up and it's like, you know, aren't you looking to, to get back in contact with your dad? And he, like, you know, he walks off saying, like, a little boy, you know, why are you here? Ain't it past your bedtime? How do you know that? He's like, oh, because I'm 11-year-old you. And then Cam kind of wakes up to realize that he was asleep and he was dreaming. But where was he at? He was on his way to see his father. And his father is actually in prison, so he's going to see his dad in prison. And his dad is played by Isaiah Washington, who was also on Grey's Anatomy um, a while ago. And, you know, yeah, so that's his father. And, you know, they sit down and everything. And I kept thinking, why is it so dark in that prison? Like, I'm, is it nighttime? I was sad. And he got a special visit to go see his daddy at night. And I don't think prison have night hours. But I also think, like, if you're in prison, like, they have lights and stuff. It just seems so dark in that goddamn on prison. And I visited a prison once before back in my 20s when, you know, an ex of mine happened to be locked up. And... It was real bright. Like, it was light everywhere. Like, it wasn't no shade, no darkness, no nothing. But I'm like, maybe they wanted to look dark for whatever reasons. Or maybe he really did go see his dad at night. Um, a special visit and, like, special privileges because he's Cam, the big basketball star. I don't know. I just know it was real dark in that goddamn place. And I was wondering why. Um, so, you know... He says to Cam, you know, you look different than the last time I saw you. And Cam was like, I don't even know when was the last time you saw me. He's like, oh, you know, 24 years ago, it was two days before Christmas, and you was crying a lot. You know, it you know, it wasn't pretty. He's like, you know, but why are you here today? Like, what did you come here for? He's like, well, you know, I lost the playoff game. You know, I cried a lot, and it wasn't pretty. And his father says, you know, how he saw the game. He, you know, I'm sorry you lost, but I thought you played well. He's like, oh, you watch my games? He's like, well, yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, the games are on in the free space of prison. So, if the games is on, you know, I watch them. And Cam was like, you know, I'm just surprised you, you know, watch my games. You know, I'm just, that's kind of surprises me. And he's like, oh, so you wouldn't, you know, kind of insult me thinking I wouldn't watch your games and I wouldn't follow you. He's like, no, but, you know, I just didn't know that you followed me. I didn't know that you were even aware or that you cared about my existence. And knowing you do, it's surprising. And he's like, you know, why are you here for, like, after all this time, why did you come visit me? And he's like, look, I'm here because I felt like I ne it needed to be done. Um, I just wondered if you thought about me, if you, you know, if you, just if you think about me. And he's like, I'm also wondering why you never reached out. So he's like, well, because I don't need anything from you. You know, I'm pretty sure... Um, everyone does that they always probably reach out for you for things and you know I don't need you and he's like you know I just w I wish you would have showed some um, interest in my existence my whole life like the fact that you've never reached out to me and his dad then goes on to say you know I've been locked up since I was 17 I'm like damn 17 I didn't know his father had been locked up that god dang on long because if his father was locked up at when he was 17 I'm pretty sure he must have got locked up pretty early on um when Cam was a kid so he's like you know but me being locked up that young you know that was completely my fault he was like however you know I did write you a few times in the beginning 
but you were a baby. He was like, you know, and, but then I got caught up, you know, with being in here. You know, when you go to prison, you can't, you know, sometimes, especially if you're 17, I'm pretty sure you, you have to get adapted to being in prison. Um, he's like, but then I wrote you again when you were like 11 or 12. And he was like, you know, but you, you never responded. You know, I get it. You could have just not wanted to talk to me. And he's like, I never got any letters. And then his father realized that his mom, since she's an Arnold's character, probably never gave him the letters. And he's like, look, you know, go ahead, you know, have a, con a conversation with your mother. And, you know, if you have any other free time, you know, I'll be here. I'm pretty sure you'll know where to find me. Like, you know, just go talk to your mom. Um, and so that's the end of that particular. I'm kind of going to go person by person. I, I was going to go scene by scene. But I think I'm going to do it differently. Um, Cam does go home and he does talk to, he calls his mom. Because he's kind of like, you know, what is going on? You know, I thought this old talent that I had like this a regular deadbeat father. But I'm like, can a father really be deadbeat if he in prison? I mean, I guess you could always still call and talk to your kid. But, you know, how much reach does a person have if they're behind bars? Because, um, I mean, you can't do anything except have conversations. Like, if your child get in trouble, you can't be like, I'm going to fuck you up, boy. Dad, no, you can't, cause you're locked up. You can't do that. I'll tell your, I'll tell your, uh, the guard. Um, so, I wonder how that situation, you know, would even play out. Anywho, you know, he does call his mom. He's like, you know, mom, I'm in Baltimore, and you know, I went and saw my father. And then she's like, mm, you know, that's weird or whatever. And he's like, you know, he said he wrote me. And she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, he said he wrote me when we were little, you know, but I never got any letters. Did he send anything? She's like, I don't know. I was too busy raising you. And he's kind of, he's not upset, but he's trying to say, you know, and she's like, why would you even go reach out to him anyway? You know, you're grown, you're an adult, you know, you can do other things, you know, leave that in the past. You know, I raised you, you know, my mom helped me raise you, your uncle helped me raise you, your aunt helped me raise you. We were busy raising you, you know, we couldn't do anything else. And then, what did she say? She, so... She was kind of upset with him, you know, harking on this situation or whatever. Anywho, she does end up, they end up ending the phone conversation. No, because she says to him, you know, it was hard raising you guys as a single parent. Um, you know, my mom helped me raise you and she died. You know, my sister helped you helped me raise you and she died. Your uncle helped me raise you and he died. She's like, people die helping me raise you, you know, because raising kids is just that hard. She's like, so forgive me if, you know... I can't remember some fucking letters from 20 years ago when I was a different person. Um, she does also say, you know, you were a kid back then, and the way you were, had you got letters from your father, you would have wanted to go to prison to be with your dad. That's the kind of person you were then. She's like, and I was just, I was also a different person back then. I'm, I'm not who I am now, you know, so the, the, the decisions I made back then, I probably would not have made them now. It's different. Um, so their phone, phone conversation ends. She then calls him back. Um, she does admit, yes, he did write you. You know, he sent you a few letters, um, and I just didn't give them to you. Because you would have wanted, wanted to go to prison to be with him. Um, and he's like, well, where are the letters? And she's like, I don't fucking know. You know, he wrote you. I had saved some of them at the house, but we got evicted in the winter, and I just didn't think about keeping the goddamn old letters. And he's like, Ma, why wouldn't you keep the letters? She's like, look, I was too busy dealing with being fucking evicted, you know, in the middle of a storm in the wintertime with two kids as a single parent. I didn't think about them goddamn old letters. You know, they were left at the house that we were evicted from. Um... She does apologize for it. It's like, you know, it was probably like maybe 10 or 20 letters that he wrote. Um, move on from it, basically. So, the last scene of Cam on this particular episode was him going to their old house. And he pulled up, got out the little Uber car or the little special car. I was surprised the goddamn gone car he pulled up and left him there. I'm like, how you gonna leave a famous basketball player in the middle of the hood, like at a, at a random house? Um, anywho, so yeah, he is outside the house. He's just looking at the house because he's probably hoping you know maybe somebody kept the letters maybe they're in the basement somewhere you know but this is from maybe 15, 10 maybe 10 15 years ago so who knows um so that was the end of cam's scene you know him coming to the, the realization that his father wasn't such a deadbeat um he was just a guy who was in prison he did try to reach out but this whole time he assumed Cam wasn't responding back to him when all actuality cam had no idea his father reached out to him 
you know, at all. So, we're going to see how that plays out this season. Um, next, we see that it picks up with Reggie and his dad. Now, you know, last season, the ending scene was Reggie having dinner with his dad and saying, you know, fuck you, don't talk to me no more. Um, stay away from me and my wife. I'm out. Peace. You know, and he leaves out. So, this episode picks up with him leaving out of that diner, going to his car. And, you know, Reggie's pissed off. He's a hothead at this particular point. What the hell? He's a hothead at this particular moment. And when he leaves and gets in his car, he opens the door and he hits the car next to him. Now, see, this is the part that got me because, you know what I'm saying, it was a little whole ghetto trap in this goddamn Volvo. And he like, damn, man, you, hit, you know, you hit my car. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to call, what did I call his ass? Oh, I called him, uh, you know, broke-ass Frank. Because Broke-Ass Frank, to me, was just his name. So, the driver, Broke-Ass Frank, I'm making up these names. Broke-Ass Frank got his car, you know, and he like, man, you hit my car. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Then we have his, you know what I'm saying, ghetto-ass girlfriend, you know, plus-ass Patricia. She was a plus-ass girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, not trying to talk bad. I'm a plus-ass girl. But still, plus-ass Patricia come pop her head out like, yeah, you hit my man's car. This is a classic. This is a Volvo. First of all, that was not a classic car. You know, it was an old-type car whatever. He dented the car. It's the pain to scratch, baby. You know, you gotta give us some money or we gonna kick your ass. So then, you know what I'm saying? Broke ass Frank, you know what I'm saying? Plus that Patricia, they all loud and ready like, me. what the fuck? Look, I didn't really damage the car, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I'm finna leave. So then, after that, you know what I'm saying? You know, big and tall Derek got the backseat. He like, what the fuck? It's the clown car? Because everybody popping up out of one door. And they like, look, Either you're going to give us some money or we're going to fuck you up. And then at that point in time, motherfucking gay-ass Gary pop out the other back seat. He like, man, what the fuck? So you got gay-ass Gary, big and tall Derek, you know what I'm saying? Broke-ass, who was it, broke-ass who? Broke-ass Frank and plus-ass Patricia. I mean, this is if this is not just the goddamn clown car, the most hood-ass clown car that I have ever seen. And y'all getting mad because, I mean... Yes, he hit the... Yes, he opened his door and it hit the other car. However, you can't get that angry that fast simply because it don't fix shit okay so they all standing around arguing because reggie is just not in the mood to have this conversation you know what i'm saying he telling you know Ge gary <laughs> reggie selling plus ass patricia to calm the fuck down don't tell me where to go don't tell me what to do it was just too much and then you know what i'm saying gay ass gary like you know what i'm saying do we gotta fuck somebody up because i that's what i do i beat nick i beat people ass come on like gay ass gary no you don't so you know what i'm saying Reggie then pulls out some money, and Brady's in the mood. So what Reggie does was stupid. He starts flicking money. You know, you know, take this shit and leave me the fuck alone. And he's flicking it on the ground. Baby, he is so fucking rude. He, is, he has been disrespectful, plus that Patricia being a goddamn instigator. Be beat his ass, and while y'all do that, I'm going to pick up his money. So then a goddamn fight ensues. But Reggie is holding his own. You know what I'm saying? He's punching and dodging and hitting on you know, uh, broke ass Frank, and then you know what I'm saying, big and tall, <laughs> big and tall Derek come to a goddamn spin. I'm like, is he? What is he spinning for? You know what I'm saying, gay ass Gary. He's ah, he jumped back in the car because he don't want no action. You know what I'm saying? So after Reggie had kind of got um, broke ass Frank down on the ground, he's running from big ass. Um, <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. Big and tall Derek and big and tall Derek trying to catch Reggie, but he's fast. So out the blue. Reggie's dad comes out and he tackles big and tall Derek. He's like, son, I got this one. So then Reggie goes and he tries to finish fighting um, broke ass Frank. But you know, seeing the plus half Patricia come out and she hits Reggie over the head with a bottle and then it's a whole big mess. So now they all fighting. You know what I'm saying? You know, gay ass Gary in the car still. He's scary. He ain't doing nothing. So as they all fight and we see the police ride up and see this scene happening. There's two white cops. And they stop and they say, should we go break that up? Should we go help? Another guy like, well, I don't know. You know, we don't have training and what to do when things escalate. You know, I don't have escalation credentials. He's like, yeah, you know, progression has its uh, things that we have to deal with. So basically they're saying, because white cops have been killing black people, I guess, in the lands, this is, I'm not saying it, this will happen in real life, but on the show. Um, because of all the killing of black men, cops have to take this escalation class before they can um, go onto a scene where things could escalate. They have to know how to handle themselves. And these two white cops, they don't have that. So guess what they do? They don't break up the fight. They say, you know what? We're going to just go on about our business. And they pull the fuck off while everybody fight them. So, you know, they're fighting, fighting, fighting. At this point, Reggie and his dad is losing. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Reggie's on the ground, getting you know, beaten up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because again, he was hit over the head with a bottle. So he's kind of out for the count. His dad, though, was holding his own. You know what I'm saying? Fucking up. You know, broke ass Frank. You know what I'm saying? He was punching, uh, you know, big and tall Derek. But then, you know, they got the best of him and they beat him up. And then they all left. It was just a crazy fight over God dang on Volvo. You know what I'm saying? Plus, how Patricia was all in the car trying to get the money that Reggie flew out. You know, gas. Gary did eventually get out. Oh, I was finna have to jump in. You two got dang on late, gay ass Gary. Get your gay ass back in the car. So, <laughs> they pull off or whatever. And then Reggie is like, you know what? I knew I should have never came here and met you. You know, this is all your fault. His head bleed like crazy. And he like, he finna drive home. You know, don't talk to me no more. He like, look, son. You know, you can't drive home. Let me call Missy. Let me call you an Uber or something. Like I told you, don't you ever call my wife again. He's like, look, if you don't listen to anything else I said, you know what I'm saying, you are clearly hurt. Because he was bleeding a lot. You clearly hurt. You know, you need an ambulance, if you, but you can't drive yourself. If you drive yourself in your condition and you start swerving, you can cause an accident and you have much, too much to lose, you know what I'm saying, to do that. He's like, if you don't listen to nothing else I say, you know, let me call you an Uber or let me call the ambulance. So he like, his, he, Reggie said, you know, are you lying about being sober? He like, no, I'm five years sober. I don't drink anymore. He tosses him his keys like, okay, you can drive him. So his dad drives him to the hospital. It was a quiet ride, of course. And once they get to the hospital, Reggie gets called to the back. And the last thing of them is his dad calling Missy. And I'm thinking he's, he's calling Missy because he's pretty sure his son don't want to talk to him when he comes out. So if I call Missy, have her be here when he come out, you know, that'd be good. That's why... Um, prediction for what's going to happen in the next episode that his father won't be there when he comes out. Missy will be. Because again, he don't want to deal with his dad. His dad did what he was going to do. He got him to the hospital, but he needs he going to need somebody to take his ass home. Um, so that was the end of that uh, particular father per parent issue. We see his wife, Missy, and she her situation was a little bit smaller. It's not much to even discuss. She is on the phone with her, her mom who was played by Vanessa Bell Calloway. I love her as an actress. And she's basically saying, you know, Reggie is angry. He doesn't want to fix the situation with his father. And, you know, I'm scared of what would happen. And he, she's just kind of wasn't her concerns over Reggie's inability to get past his daddy issues, basically. His, her mom is basically saying, look, you married a man who had not such a positive male role model in his life. He didn't have the best upbringing. So why are you surprised that he's not listening to you when you're trying to make him experience what you experienced? You know you have great parents. He didn't have that. So he's not going to get you wanting him to fix it because he didn't have the same, you know what I'm saying, parent rearing days or years or months of life that you had. Um, She also then says, look, you know, I knew this would happen. You would eventually call me about issues between your, you and your husband. You're going to call me again in the, in the middle of the night. And when you do, you know, me and your father will open you with open arms here. Basically saying, you know what I'm saying, eventually y'all going to get a divorce. And when y'all do, we'll, you know, you can come on back home. And she's like, Mom, I didn't call you, you know, for that. I called you for you to listen. She's like, but I am listening. She's like, Mom, you know, you're not listening. You're talking. You're not listening to what I'm saying. And the whole time, you know, Vanessa, um, Missy's mom was in bed and her dad is right there. Her dad, like, look, I got to get up in the morning. You know, go talk downstairs. So he just, you know, in the bed asleep or whatever. So as the mom keeps talking, the dad takes the phone. He's like, baby, we love you. You know, you and Reggie going to be okay. Go talk to your husband. Have a good night. And he hangs up the phone. He then tells his wife, you know, she's like, why would you do that? And he's like, I just saved you from yourself. You might not know it, notice, know it, but I did. He's like, now go downstairs, call her back, and apologize for saying too much. She's like, I don't like your tone. He's like, well, that means you got my point, though, didn't you? It was a cute little scene. So that was the whole thing, you know, with Missy and her father. Um, the last part of it is, you know, M. Chuck trying to find the men who raped her mother, which resulted in her, her being born. Um, last season, you know, they have been saying how M. Chuck didn't know who her, who her father was. Her mother never talked about it. So, in the ending season, she admitted, you know, I was raped. You know, I was gang raped. I was basically raped by multiple people. And from that rape, I got pregnant with her. Um, so, I don't know who her father is because, you know, they raped me. And 
and Chuck is on this, this quest to find her father to kind of figure out where she came from. And she's kind of pissed off too that her mother was raped and that's how she um, came to life. So she also kind of wants revenge too on these men who raped her mother. So she goes back to Baltimore and she goes to Baltimore and she goes see their old friend Pookie. And Pookie <laughs> still lives in Baltimore with his mama. I thought that was funny. So, you know, when she gets there, she's like, look, I need you to tell me what happened with my mom, you know, all those years ago, the night that she got raped. I want to know what happened and who the guys are. Um, I want to kind of get revenge and find out who my father is. And at first, Pookie's like, what? You know, I can't, I don't talk about it. She's like, look, my mom already told me that part, but she won't tell me anything else. So, I just need to know. You know what I'm saying? For a moment, Pookie, like, are you wearing a wire? And she's like, what the fuck is that? Well, you want to see my tits? And he's like, no, you know, no. And she's like, you know, I have good tits. And she's like, he's like, I can see tits whenever I want. It became a whole tits conversation about, do you want to see her tits? I can see tits, when, I can see tits whenever I want. I can go see my neighbor's tits if I want to. And, you know, whatever. What do I want to see your tits for? I can't do nothing with your tits. You know? That's a good fucking point. So, he then says, call your mom. You know, if your mom says it's okay for me to tell you what I know, I'll tell you. So, she does call her, her mom. Her mom is in Shanghai with her, you know, her boyfriend. And she's like, hey, mom, here in Baltimore. I'm, I'm here with Pookie. And I need you to tell him that he can tell me what he knows about that night. And she's like, didn't I tell you I didn't want to talk about that anymore? And she's like, well, yeah. And she's like, so now you're calling me to talk about what I told you I didn't want to talk about anymore. You know, take me on speakerphone. She then goes to say, you know, it was a crazy, it was a bad night. You know, it happened. I don't want to be a victim of it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And I told you that. Why are you so gung ho to try to figure this out? You know, take me on speakerphone. She then says, Spooky, tell her the little bit that you know so that she'll leave it alone. You know, y'all ruining my shit that I'm having here in my new life. Trying to bring up old shit. And this whole time that she's talking, she's plunging the toilet because she took a shit and the toilet is clogged. So while she's trying to plunge a goddamn on toilet full of shit, she's saying that, you know, they're trying to bring up old shit in her life and she got new shit going on and she ain't trying to deal with that shit. I thought that was, you know what I'm saying, a cool way to put shit into the situation. So, you know, Pookie then goes on to say, you know, your mom did go to a party and she was raped by three kid by three guys they were 15 to 16 years old um you know when we went looking for her the following day you know your uncle uncle junior uncle julius found her you know walking down the street and she was pretty banged up she had you know bruises everywhere you know she had rope burn on her wrist which means they tied her down and you know it was a crazy situation and she's like i can't believe you know how did those six fucks get away with it? i can't believe it and he's like they didn't get away with it. And she's like, what? So, the last ending scene is... Well, he insinuates that something happened to them. Um, we don't know what. You know? But the next scene is her saying, take me to the gravesite. So, we know if not all, one, two, or three, or some of them, of the three, um, were killed. We don't know how yet. So, I guess that will come into light to play later. And that was basically the whole episode. So, so the whole episode was really about, um, you know, Cam trying to figure out stuff with his father. Um, Reggie trying to, Reggie was finishing a conversation with his father. And in the midst of that, his father came and basically helped him fight. And, you know, M. Chuck coming to the realization that the people who raped your mom are possibly dead. Um, and that was the whole episode. So, you know, I hope you guys liked my review. I hope you'll be back next week for my review. And, you know, remember to like, subscribe to my channel. I am, oh, like, subscribe, share my videos, throw a comment at the bottom, you know, all that good stuff. I'm about to leave the house to go hang out with some of my cousins and my siblings. So, thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.